Salam and grace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you to Bishop Samiyech and Pastor Budni for the invitation to bring you a message on this Reformation Day. I had hoped to be with you in Poland, but due to the coronavirus, we must postpone my visit until next year. Inshallah, God willing. I will be with you in 2021 to preach, to share communion, and to learn more about your church and its good work. Although Jerusalem and the Holy Land are called home for any who are baptized into our Lord Jesus Christ, I know that not many of you have had the opportunity to travel here. You may not know very much about the Lutheran presence in this place. For this reason, on this Reformation Day, I would like to share a bit about the history of the Lutherans in the Holy Land, as well as some news about the ongoing Reformation which is happening in and among the people today. Our church history, the Lutheran presence in this land began through German missionary efforts in the middle of the 19th century. German missionaries established schools and orphanages and hospitals in various towns in the, in the West Bank and in Jerusalem. In the beginning, the Lutherans worked in partnership with the Anglican Church, even sharing a joint bishop. Before the turn of the 20th century, however, that partnership dissolved. Over the next 50 years, the Arabic-speaking Palestinian Lutheran communities gradually gained independence from the German Church. Today we are an independent church body consisting of seven churches in Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Beit Jala, Beit Sahur, Ramallah, the Amman, and the baptismal site in Jordan. We have 2,500 baptized members, four schools, a kindergarten, an environmental education center, a college, a service, guest houses. We also help to oversee the Augusta Victoria Hospital on the Mount of Olives. Although we are a small church, we make a huge impact on society through our ministries. Schools. <clears throat> the Lutheran schools established in this land were very successful in bringing people to the Lutheran church. Sometimes entire families, one of our current church members and school administrators, Salame, tells a story of his grandfather who was educated in a Lutheran school. His grandfather was blind, and the Lutheran school he visited gave him a very good education, teaching him skills so he could support a family. As a young man, having been deeply attacked by this experience, Salama grandfather joined the Lutheran Church. For the rest of his life, he celebrated that day rather than his birthday, because he saw it as the beginning of a new life. Today, our Lutheran schools continue to have a profound effect on our communities 
and on individual lives. This is to even with the challenges of the corona virus. Our teachers have quickly learned new technologies and have changed their teaching methods to accommodate e-learning. Diaconical work. Another important hallmark of the Lutheran presence in the Holy Land is our commitment to the diaconate. My father, Charlie Azar, was a deacon in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land. Along with two of my aunts, when I was elected as a bishop, I knew that renewing and increasing the diaconical presence in the church would be a priority in my ministry. At this time, we are in the process of identifying more people who feel called to feed the hungry and clothe the widow. Encouraging and equipping all who are called to serve is part of our heritage and an integral part of who we are as Evangelical Lutheran Christians. We have an opportunity in this time to witness to the Reformation concept of the priesthood of all believers. We do this through training and commissioning deacons, but we also do this anytime we empower church members to use their gifts and talents in service to God's mission. Of course, church members are already serving their families and communities in powerful ways, whether or not they are recognized by the church. But our task as church leaders is to help everyone to see their daily work as a calling from God. Gender justice, <clears throat> another area of ongoing reform is the pursuit of gender justice in our church. This has not been an easy road. We are working against cultural norms as well as long-held biblical interpretations. There have been many people, even within the church, who have struggled to reform their understanding of what it means that God made both women and men in God's image. In spite of these challenges, in 2015, the Synod of the ELCJHL expected a new constitution for our ecclesiastical family court, which is based on gender justice. This is the only constitution in the Middle East which establishes full equality for men and women in matter of marriage, divorce, and adoptions. We have also made huge steps forward. Full inclusion and justice for women on the issue of ordination. In 2017, former Bishop Monique Bunan ordained an American woman as a deacon. And in 2019, I ordained the Reverend Maria Lepakari as Finnish woman who services as director of Jerusalem's Swedish Theological Institute. Very soon, I will ordain the first Palestinian Lutheran woman as a pastor in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land. 
We as a church are committed to encourage and educating all women and men who are called by God to serve the church and the mission of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> COVID-19 The COVID-19 crisis has changed the way people everywhere live, work, travel, and pray. Here in Palestine and Israel, we are no different. However, we face a few extraordinary challenges in our context. First, the pandemic only worsens the ongoing effect of the Israeli occupation. We have already been living without freedom of movement, with checkpoints, and with many other restrictions. We have seen that the pandemic has only increased the opportunity for Israeli authorities to express Palestinians. Secondly, the economy in Jerusalem and the West Bank is based on the tourism industry since March 2020 when the West Bank was closed due to a handful of cases at a hotel in Bethlehem, our economy has collapsed. The poverty rate is at more than 25%. Our church families are suffering unemployment and in some cases through hunger. It is difficult to see when tourism might return. Even after borders open and COVID is contained, it is likely to take years before tourists and pilgrims travel here again. In response to these difficult circumstances, our church has stepped in to help. We have provided money and food, vouchers to hundreds of needy families. We continue to teach children even when parents are unable to pay school tuition. Our pastors are embracing new technologies, providing online opportunities for worship and prayer. The Environmental Education Center is teaching local families to grow their own food, to preserve water and natural resources, <clears throat> and to take proper health precautions to hold the spread of COVID-19. In other words, we are a reforming church. As Evangelical Lutheran Christians, we believe in a living world and a living God. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to inspire and to motivate the church. We believe in the power of resurrection. This terrible virus will not have the last word neither for Palestinians nor for the world. Life, love, and liberation will prevail. For the God of life is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Thank you again for the invitation to share this message with you. I pray for the Polish Evangelical Lutheran Church, for your bishop and your pastors, and for your mission. May God of peace give you strength and courage and fill your hearts with love. May the peace of God, which 
This is all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.